Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, the American people have lost literally trillions of dollars as a result of the meltdown of our financial markets. This is a disaster of monumental and unprecedented proportions. Think of the retirees who have lost more than half their savings and are lay awake at night worrying about how they're going to make it. Think of the parents who can no longer afford to send their children to college of their choice or even to college at all. Think of the businessmen and women who will cancel investments and lay off workers because they cannot raise capital. Hopes crushed, dreams denied, plans canceled, opportunities lost. Mr. President, we need to restore the strength of our financial markets. We need to rebuild the confidence in our economy and our markets so that we can restore those losses. We all look forward to the day when wealth and employment in America are growing again. There are many things we must do to make that happen. Foremost, we must rescue, reform, and recapitalize our banking system. In the Judiciary Committee, we moved on March 5th to restore investor confidence by reporting S-386, the Fraud Enforcement Recovery Act. Chairman Leahy, Senator Grassley, Senator Schumer, Senator Klobuchar and I press this legislation forward because we need to ensure that the Justice Department, the FBI, and other law enforcement agencies have the resources they need to find, prosecute, and jail those who have committed financial fraud. Our markets will flourish again only when investors are confident that the market will be held accountable to the law. This is one step we must take. I'm here today to talk about another urgently needed piece of the much larger project of restoring confidence in our capital markets. We must stop the artificial manipulation of stock prices. We must stop the abuse of short selling of securities. Mr. President, I'm convinced that the SEC must restore the uptick rule and issue regulations that effectively ban abuse of short selling. Abuse of short selling is tantamount to fraud and market manipulation and must be stopped. The uptick rule must stop be restored now. Mr. President, there's a growing consensus that the SEC must move quickly to reinstate the uptick rule. Everyone is talking about it. Everyone seems to report it. Everyone believes the SEC needs to put on the brakes and stop those who dump millions of shares they don't own to drive prices down. Abuse of short selling amounts to gasoline on the fire for distressed stocks and distressed markets. Abuse of short selling happens when traders and hedge funds sell stock shares they don't have and won't be able to deliver. Let me make myself clear. The problem isn't short selling itself. Short selling can actually enhance market efficiency and provide the market with information it needs to set prices at appropriate levels. The problem is that under current rules, short sellers are allowed to sell stocks they haven't actually borrowed in advance of their short sale and with no uptick rule in place as a circuit breaker. This, in turn, frequently means they all too often simply fail to deliver the stocks they have supposedly sold. Abusive short sales expose sellers and those linked to their short sales to the risk that when settlement day arrives, the short seller won't have the necessary shares available. That harms the market and market participants, particularly when failure to deliver persists for substantial periods, as statistics show they clearly have. <clears throat> Mr. President, we have the opportunity to have the SEC become a can-do agency once more. Under the leadership of Chairman Shapiro, the SEC needs to improve, move a pace to protect investors and restore investor confidence. I believe the SEC must impose, impose at least two important changes. It must reestablish the uptick rule and must establish a mandatory, market-wide, pre-bar requirement to sell shares short. As for the uptick rule, the rule stood us in good stead for 70 years. It was first established in 1938, and the SEC eliminated it in July 2007. In my view, and I'm not alone, it should never have been repealed. The uptick rule is especially helpful when market, the market is falling. It simply requires short sellers to take a breath and wait for an increase in price before continuing to sell shares short. Establishing a man mandatory market-wide pre-bar requirement would simply require short sellers to demonstrate at the time of the sale that they have a legally enforceable right to deliver the shares of the stock at the required delivery date. To permit short sellers to sell shares they don't have turns our capital markets into gambling casinos. 
Where these naked short sellers profit if the price goes down and fail to deliver if the price doesn't. The time has come for that practice to stop. Mr. President, I wrote to the SEC Chair, Mary Shapiro, on March 3rd, making these same points. I understand that she testified before the Banking Committee in February that she intends, as quickly as possible, to engage in a full review of the SEC's actions with respect to short selling, including an evaluation of whether the uptick rule should be reinstated. I also understand the SEC is scheduled to meet soon to discuss ways to reform short selling practices. Mr. President, we need quick action to restore investor confidence. That is why I, along with Senator Isaacson of Georgia, am introducing a bill today that would direct the SEC to write regulations addressing abusive short sales. We believe that restoring the uptick rule is necessary but not sufficient to end abusive short selling. Our bipartisan bill would direct the SEC to write regulations within 60 days that accomplish five things to end abusive short selling. One, reinstate the substance of that portion of its prior regulations that prohibited short sales that are not made on an increase in the price of the stock. This prevents short sellers from piling on a declining stock, driving prices down. Two, require trades by short sellers and securities to yield priority and preference to transactions affected by long sellers of securities. This would require exchanges and other trading venues to execute the trades of long sellers instead of short sellers, all other things being equal. Third, with the concurrence of the Secretary Treasurer and the Chairman of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System, prohibit short sales of the securities of any financial institution unless the trade is affected at a price in minimum lots specified by the Commission at least five cents higher than the immediately preceding transaction in such securities. Our financial se sector and financial stocks are in a fragile state, and our taxpayers now hold substantial shares of many institutions. If the Treasury and the Fed believe they need additional protection these times, this legislation permits it. Four, prove that any person from selling security short, and let that, unless that person has the time of the short sale, a demonstrably legal and enforceable right to deliver the securities at the required delivery date. Under current law, many short sellers fail to deliver. We must tighten up the rules. Five, require that all short sales settle on the same time frame employed for long sales of the same securities. There is no reason short sellers should have 13 days to deliver shares when long sellers have only three days. I look forward to hearing from Chair Shapiro soon about the conclusions of a review and the actions the SEC intends to take to stop these harmful activities that are preventing our markets from returning to a sound footing. In the meantime, Senator Isaacson and I believe the Senate should move forward with this legislation, directing the SEC to take action now. In the end, I hope the SEC will move quickly on its own to take these actions urgently and now. I ask unanimous consent the full text of the bill be printed in the record. Without objection. I yield the floor.